Hello! If you are new to my channel, I am DeweyNM23 from Sergeant Dewey Gaming. And if you are returning, welcome back. Today we have some exciting news for you. Recently, I was able to take part in a closed beta for Skull and Bones. With the upcoming video, I will show some gameplay and provide some thoughts. Now, let's sail forth into the big blue. Skull and Bones has been a highly anticipated game and finally has a release date, February 16th, 2024. For all the changes they have made and for constantly making us wonder if Ubisoft was ever going to release Skull and Bones, there were a lot of questions raised. Like, was the wait truly worth it? Will the game be any good? We'll answer all these questions later in the video. When you start the game, there's a pretty good character creation screen. Forgive me for not having video footage of this. We were only allowed six hours of actual in-game time. That included the menu screen. And in this excitement, I forgot to push record. How dare they limit my playtime. Skull and Bones is a rags to riches type of game. And with that, there are many things that it introduces. So much, in fact, it would take a while to go over. So we'll start with the level system. Now, the level system, otherwise known as Infamy, can be earned by destroying AI ships, completing contracts, or taking on bounties. There are two types of contracts, main story and side contracts. The side contracts can be found all over in places like the contract board or a random person along your travels. The main contracts are mainly given to you by John Skrillock, who is the current Pirate King, hey, better watch that is, for here. now. Each have a random task for you to complete, and some even have a time limit. And as you gain infamy, you can unlock ship upgrades, stronger ships to add to your fleet, and also allow you to craft different things. Bounties are difficult missions given to you by one of the many different factions in the game that require you to fight a strong pirate captain. They usually committed some type of crime in the pirate world that they need punishing for. These bounties can be pretty difficult and far away. So don't forget to deck out your ship with the latest weapon or bonus equipment. You can also customize your ship's flag and other appearances. In the same menu, you can repair your ship if damaged with coin earned. But in order to be able to do this, you must be in a port like San An or one of the small random ports across the map. Now, there are two things that are highly focused on other than contracts. That is the sea battles and materials. And both of these at some point requires you to battle something. The battling feature is pretty great. Since this is a pirate game, your time will mostly spent on the sea. You will go on land to complete various things but never fight. Yes, you heard me right. You don't fight on land. I know that's disappointing for some, but you'll have many battles on the big blue. The sea battles can get pretty intense and can range from fighting one ship to multiple at a time. It will take some time to get used to, but if you have played Assassin's Creed Black Flag, you'll be able to pick it up very quickly. For the amount of time that I got to play, I have discovered there are multiple weapons you can equip to your ship, but you don't need to have crafted them first. It doesn't have the fire barrels that you can release like Black Flag, but once again, it is early game, and, it, and as, but as long as you have weapons crafted and attached, you can fire right away after a short reload. You are able to attack on the front and both sides of the ship. If you are about to run into a ship, you can even brace yourself and lower the impact damage. You can board other ships when their health is low enough to get more materials. Though, the boarding aspect is not the greatest, and here is why. Yes, that was the boarding feature. A little cinematic, don't you think? More materials mean more things to craft. Word of advice though, make sure you have plenty of repair kits available, especially if you are hunting for materials by battling others. There are different levels of repair kits, and if you aren't, you, and if they aren't used at the right time, this happens. No, 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 please, no. Emotional damage. Yeah, it was pretty emotional, and that's why the controller went flying through the air. Now, if your ship sustains heavy damage, and it sinks either because you don't have enough repair kits, or you're still on cooldown, it will pop up with two options. Go to port or be revived using coin. If you're using coin, remember, you'll have an amount of HP taken off your health bar. 
until repaired. Of course, this is each time you use that option. I believe the max is four times, so you have to be careful when using this. I personally think that it's helpful though, because if you're in a boss battle and you're almost complete, you are able to pick up where you left off fighting. Now, I would say do not use this more than twice because you would be fighting a losing battle if, if you do it more than twice. Now, if you return to port and you, if you wish to retrieve your items, just sail back to the area you died in. But keep in mind, the map is rather large and some enemies are pretty tough. You may have to complete this step more than once, but if that's the case, you can always request for help from other players. Now onto other ways to gain materials. They are located around the map or taken from other players or enemies. Some you have to fight other ships and plunder their cargo for. That is, when a ship is destroyed, the cargo that is being carried is left in the spot where the ship is where you sunk it. Since it is an open world, anybody can come by and grab the cargo from the shipwreck. You can even find them in the water or laying around on land as you explore. Most of the time, you'll be on the water though. You can also gather materials from the trees, from random shipwrecks and mineral deposits. Each one of these open up a little mini game that allows you to push X to hit the green target area if you are on PlayStation. If you happen to be full, now listen up. If you happen to be full on cargo, just stop at any port and store your goods in the storehouse or in a little box that says cache, or in the menu right before you set sail. This is very helpful because especially if you sat there and hunted down these resources, you wouldn't want to lose them. Oh yeah, and don't forget to check your mail. Remember, I said you could gather your materials earlier. Well, guess what? You can also trade for goods or plunder seaports for the goods. Now, the choice is yours, trade or plunder. Trading usually requires coin, but completing the side or main store contracts, you'll earn plenty. You can even sell the goods if need be. Now, if you plunder, you won't be able to trade at that port. Be careful though, enemy ships will come in and try to defend the port you are attacking. The crafting of various weapons and gear requires not only materials mined in the open, but also from fishing spots and trades. Ever wanted to go deep sea fishing? Well, you guess what? You are in luck. You can fish and fight various ocean creatures for food and skins to use for crafting. Their locations are marked on the map. There are also contracts that require items found in the big blue. Fishing requires a special boat though. But guess what? You start out with the ship and it's called the doll. You may be sailing and notice that the weather changes it's sunny on the land, but sometimes it gets stormy. The weather changes constantly in the game, but on the big blue, bright and sunny days to raging storms. That makes it hard to control and battle it. I personally think the changing of the weather is pretty cool. It gives you a feeling of the tossing of the waves. Just be careful not to get thrown overboard. Haha, <laughs> get it? No? Okay, moving on. Out of the many features that are featured in this game, I personally think I saved the best for last. Skull and Bones allows you to play with friends or other people. I unfortunately did not get to try out this feature. Each player has their own ship. Yes, their own ship. And you complete contracts and fight and explore on the big blue. Together! Yes, that means random people can help you in a bounty or even a world event if you're not in a party. Guess what? This game is even cross-play. So, Xbox, PlayStation, and PC, you all can play together. Has the little fancy symbols as well. So, being crossplay, being able to craft various things, having a lot of ship battles, and a large amount of things to do, makes this a good game for short and long-term play. Does this game live up to the Assassin's Creed Black Flag fame? No, but it's not quite there yet. But it's still a game worth getting. It has time to grow and expand. And it will be a new game after all. So I'm excited to see what changes they make and features they add. What are your thoughts on Skull and Bones? Leave a comment below. All right, you want to be pirates? Are you willing to try and become the next Pirate King? I am Sergeant Dewey, signing off. Till next time.